So the networking is the most important topic for any cloud engineer or anyone working on to cloud, whether you're working as a, um, a system administrator, network administrator, database administrator, uh, storage admin or architect, developer, DevOps, anything that you're working, everything will revolve around networking. And that's what we are going to cover today. Today is day five of a 12 days series. My name is Atul from Team K Tone Academy. And today we are going to look everything from a within 15 minutes about networking which includes VPC, which is a virtual private cloud, subnets, and then firewall, three different type of firewall. We're going to talk about network firewall, NSG, which is network security group, network and, and sorry, uh, access control list, NACL, and then different connectivity op options like VPN and direct connect, that are two main or three different type of gateways, which is um, internet gateway, um, um, NAT gateway and transit gateway, including yeah, my Route 53, which is a DNS service. Now, we are on this series about where we're looking at, uh, we have already covered, we'll talk about these, what we have covered and from day two, or one to five, if time permits, day one to four, if time permits, we're going to cover that towards end. Also towards the end, I'm going to also tell you about a free class that you can learn, understand to go deeper if you're preparing for a job, if you're already preparing for certification, job, or, or um, resume building, etc. But we will go to, going to go deeper into those as well as well on day 11 and day 12. Now, coming back to the topic, networking, as I said, will dictate every machine, uh, which is could be a virtual machine, containers, Kubernetes, for, uh, or you have like databases, load balancers, everything and anything that needs connectivity that will come via networking. So in that networking, uh, what AWS configure it is a VPC virtual private cloud, which is nothing but a collect or a think of it as a parameter in which or boundary, which is continuous block of IP addresses. Um, that is a VPC virtual private cloud. How to create? Um, we'll see that in a minute, but by default, you get a default VPC every region. What is a region? We covered it in day one. I'll show it to you again here today. Now that networking that you see that you, this is basically on a high level so you have a, for example this is my um, vpc which is tied within a region so inside a region i have the network which we'll talk about in a minute that network will have routers gateways routing tables and then connectivity from on-premise as well as between the cloud maybe a, between aws different cloud regions or with on-premise as well now that is my vpc so if you look at the diagram here this is my vpc uh, so VPC is always specific to a region within a region, whereas in Google, it's different. Google can uh, Google networking can across um, Google Cloud networking can span across regions, whereas in AWS or Azure or, or Oracle, they are within a region. Now that VPC, which is nothing but a continuous block of IP addresses, further subdivided into called subnets, and then. Within inside the subnet, you create your load balancers, machines, uh, databases, et cetera, et cetera. And their IP will be received from one of the IPs in VPC that we covered earlier. Now, these machines can go to the internet through uh, or connect to the internet through something called as NAT gateway or internet gateway, which we'll see in a minute. But then they also have these um, uh, subnets and VPCs have something called as routing table, which will dictate how the request will go out or come back in. That's a little bit more advanced topic, but just to for you, there's something called as a routing table. And there's a default route table, there's an alternate route table, all those things will come. Also, there's a default VPC that comes handy and they can create some additional VPCs, uh, VPCs if required on the network. Now, if you look at here, this, this is my uh, AWS console. And what you can do is from services, you can go and look at all the networking services that are available under networking and content and delivery. Now I have, this is the bottom level VPC, virtual private cloud. We'll look at other things as well, but this is where you can go and access my VPC. Now, if you see here, I'm inside this uh, US East region. And within that, if I come here on VPC, there's a one VPC, uh, which is there. And within that VPC, as I said, there is a, uh, let me move it slightly up here. Now, this is a IPv4 uh, CIDR address 172.31.0.0.16. Again, uh, there's a whole topic in itself. If you, it's good to know about CIDR, maybe we'll cover in future. If you want something more, just leave a comment and we'll provide you more information on that. Now, within that, that probably has, a, this VPC will have my subnets. 
and to see where these subnets are just click on a resource map view and inside that you see all these there are six subnets within this vpc and then there is a default route table that goes out as well now you can come and create more additional vpcs if you want and then later when we create a resource like virtual machine that we saw earlier a previous day uh, or databases you can use these um, inside this um, here so that's my vpc let's go back on here or maybe see one more thing which is a route table as well i wanted to show it to you on a route table on the vpcs as well so this is the route table i was talking about by default it's here this is the default route table that you see here okay now coming back to uh, subjects i've already covered then you have something called as elastic ip now by default when you assign a public ip to a machine or a load balancer or something that ip uh, when you restart the machine the ip address might change if you normally assign a normal type of ip but if when you assign an elastic IP, that IP will stay same even after restart the machine or um, yeah. So if you want a machine to always have that same static IP, you, you assign a static IP, um, which is called as elastic IP. Now, how do you define on elastic IP under the virtual machines or each of these virtual machines? You should be, you should be able to like other, otherwise networking here. You can see here this uh, elastic IP. You can create more elastic IPs and then later you can attach these or allocate these elastic IPs to a virtual machine, which will cover that. If you want to know more, let me know. I'll show you an additional video for that. Now, that is my elastic IP. Now, next is the security or firewall. Now, there are three types of firewall available in AWS Cloud. One is called as network access control list. Now, this is a firewall which is applicable at a subnet level. So anything coming out or going in can be controlled what is allowed and not allowed which ports are allowed and from where to allowed that i can configure using network access control list however i have one more firewall which is a network security group which is tied at a more granular level which is my ip level so i can assign what coming in or going out of from that ip using that network security group as well so that's the difference between network access control list and network security group very very commonly asked in the interviews uh, as well now there is a third thing which is a firewall now you can protect a lot of requests coming in and out through either network access control list or network security group but you also some companies have a more in-depth requirement like they want to do the packet inspection to see whether there's no uh, like basically not a rogue uh, packets they want to decipher that packet or they also want to do the intrusion prevention system and for scenarios like that you have a network firewall which will which can inspect all the packets going in and out of that as well and especially when you expose your network to the internet that's always good practice to put and that's where you put a third type of firewall which is called as network firewall i hope it's making sense if you have any follow-up questions put it in the chat um, or the comment section in inside this video then gateways are mainly typically for requests going out or in of that vpc so you might be going out to the internet or you might be going to the on-premise connectivity or you might be going to the other vpcs or maybe across regions or across different cloud and that is where my gateway will come into handy now one of the gateways internet gateway and this is where you go and uh, uh, so internet gateway mainly uh, will be used if you have a public subnet any request going out or coming in will go over the internet for the internet as name suggests will be through internet gateway now there's a net gateway which stands for network address translation uh, that is if you have a private a machine in a private subnet if anything that in private subnet wants to go to the internet going out then you use net gateway so that's main purpose of net gateway now there'll be on the email uh, that you uh, have there'll be some more uh, documentation you can read for example this is elastic ip there's more vpc subnets and if you want to read more about these gateways you can read it by clicking on these links and how to get link if you're watching this on some other place not via the email you can go to this url ketonacademy.com forward slash aws01 go to this url it will take you into this page where you can find and enter your name email address and the phone number correct phone number so you can add it into the whatsapp group and you get a reminder and some additional help as well so that's nat gateway and uh, internet gateway there's a third type of gateway which is the transit gateway now the purpose of the transit gateway is let's suppose you have multiple networks within aws cloud or with on-premise or something 
um, and you want to have a central hub point where all the different network can come and talk to the central place that is the uh, transit gateway so what transit gateway is it basically simplifies your network architecture by connecting multiple vpcs uh, through a single uh, gateway through transit that is transit gateway and then act as a central hub as well if you want to know more about transit gateway read more on how to build it probably worth looking at this documentation that's pointing to our blog which will tell more about transit gateway as well uh, yeah so everything you need to know including uh, how to why you should use what is transit gateway difference between transit gateway and vpc peering and so on as well so worth reading that then last is about connectivity where you can how you connect uh, to with on premise or with other networks uh, so there are two main categories one is direct connect which is a dedicated pipe and if you're coming from azure you have an express route if you're coming from oracle you have a fast connect something similar to that you have direct connect which is a dedicated thick pipe where you can do gigabits of transmissions on on using that dedicated pipe or direct connect you also have a uh, vpn which is a virtual private network which is a ipsec uh, over ipsec over the internet data moves securely to connect between on premise to cloud or aws cloud with other cloud vendors as well that's my vpn uh, now difference between vpn and, and direct connect um that direct connect is a dedicated uh, you can always expect the kind of a bandwidth and it's much bigger than vpn whereas vpn you're relying on um, on the on the internet now pro tip you can do is vpn and direct connect what you can do is you can also configure vpn over the direct connect as well so that's a little bit more secure method of connecting as well now because i have a 15 minute let me move on to next is the load balancer and load balancer as name suggests is balances the load request coming from one client and then you can distribute it to across multiple backends we call backends or maybe instances or databases now there are two type of load balancers typically earlier there was a classic load balancer but you will see two main categories of a load balancer one is application load balancer that works at a osi layer 7 model what http or https traffic level whereas you have a another type of load balancer which is network load balancer and that node network load balancer works as a layer 4 or layer 4 of osi model which is a tcp udp um, protocol level so depending on the requirement you might have some uh, network level traffic load balancer or the application level load balancers you can configure them as well and the final is dns which is a uh, domain name service this is a route 53 which will take your request from a client and distribute it to the wherever you want to the backend maybe could could be to a load balancer or a lot of other services it can distribute the sole purpose of dns or the route 53 is to take the name and convert it into ip that can be pointing to anywhere in aws cloud so that's route 53 or dns as well now task for you is basically take this link and create a vpc what you need to do is you need to go and creating your vpc there's a video and i think probably uh, sorry uh, so you can um now task for use uh, there is a task which is how to create a custom vpc there's a step-by-step -step procedure it should point to our blog as well as a youtube video creating a first vpc as well uh, now uh, if you want to go deeper this is just a beginning uh, if you want to go deeper there'll be some link which is uh, pointing to a free class if you have not yet attended a free class i do a, a little bit more in depth where we talk everything about job and uh, and and a certification uh, so the link should be in the description below or in the email that you're doing so maybe join that uh, free class that will tell you a little bit more about how to prepare for job and certification with that this is atul we talked covered just to do a quick recap on we have covered networking everything beginning from a vpc to the connectivity to the firewall to the load balancers etc on a, in a 15 minute timer now tomorrow we're going to talk about aws devops tools ci cd git cloud formation automation very very interesting going to be and so with that i'm going to see you tomorrow with aws devops tools take care and bye for now